Yeah. You are linked to Taylor Swift. Right? In a weird way, yeah. Let's go. That was truly f***ing awful. I would f***ing an Italian goo, beef. Goo, goo, I'll tell you that. <laughs> this is how he does it. Ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to welcome the guy who founded the Chive a mere 15 years ago. He's my boss, and he started a new podcast called Long Shots with John Rezig. He's the John Rezig. Hello, John. Hi, Joe. How are you? How are you doing? Uh, I'm good. I'm scared. Uh, you shouldn't be scared. Well, you're the man with the power. And you're a man drinking beer out of a coffee cup. Well, we're trying to sell merch. Chivery.com. Because I'm afraid I've had my legal team come up with this agreement, it is legally binding. Yeah. And uh, I'd love for you to read it, sign it, and then I think we're going to have a great interview. Being of sound mind and body, do you hereby agree that anything uttered in the course of my interview with the underrated and comedically gifted Joe Barlow and sex symbol hmm. may not be used for Joe's Termination, even if Joe says some weird, bad stuff. I feel like all of your past dates. Yeah, with the NDAs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank I agree you. to that. Yeah. And you've signed that. Yeah. So we'll, we'll pull this out to the HR hearing later today. <laughs> John, <laughs> let's get loose, brother, huh? This is Malort. People like when you drink Malort. But I don't like when I drink Malort. Well, I probably haven't had a shot of Malort in two years. That's good. You're not I have a to. violent reaction to drinking. That's why people like me drinking. It. Well, we have a close up. Let's go. I feel like it gets better. I kind of like that. It tastes like sadness. Oh, and then it comes up later. Why did you do that? I don't like it. I just think it's funny. <laughs> And again, you can't legally <laughs> yeah, fire me. Yeah, good, good one with that. And it. legally, you called me a sex symbol, so thank you so much. Okay. Let's get into the questions. Mm. Are you a bad boy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Yeah? I've done some bad things, but I don't think that makes me a bad boy. So you're a good boy. Oh, man, that, and then now when you frame <laughs> it like that. Uh, no, I think, uh, I don't know. You're a medium boy. I think I'm a medium boy, to okay. be honest with you. Yeah, Good. I like a little spicy, a little sugary though. Wow. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm on that Hot Wings episode. Oh, we could have escalated this. Because that was truly fucking awful. Well, I hate it so much. If it's loosening you up, then my question next is, uh, what's your net worth? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, fast. This is going well because you, <laughs> you haven't stormed off yet. John, 15 years. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The Chive. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought? Mm -hmm. Not you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what can you tell us about those early days? Because there's a lot of mythology built around the Chive at this point. I, the thing I remember the most is that we never thought we'd make any money and that bled into the content. Like we did not care. Yes. We just didn't, you, you just didn't give a shit. You, and, and you could see it like there was a lot of slideshows back in the day on, on Facebook because everyone wanted to monetize. That's why people came to the Chive is we put everything on this free flowing scroll with no slideshows, mm -hmm. which is a better user experience. Sometimes I've been shocked where it does seem like we make a thing that is actually detrimental to us monetarily. Yeah. And then we, we do it because we're like, this our audience wants this. It's in our DNA. Yeah. <laughs> like the, uh, I do things that's detrimental to my health, like drinking Jepson's Malort. But you know the audience wants it. They love it. it. Yeah, I, did, I remember we did not give a shit mm -hmm. back in the day. And we never thought we were gonna make <laughs> any money. Well, sounds like you're a bad boy. <laughs> John, I wanted to ask you questions that I always get asked about the chive. Yeah, yeah. Um, first question, why is it called the chive? Uh, my brother was in Chicago at the time, and I was in Venice Beach. CHI from Chicago, VE from Venice Beach. But the interesting part about that is we really wanted to call it Darby Gunpowder, mm -hmm. um, which is at the time there was something popular where you took the street that you lived on and your first pet's name. For your porn name? 
it was kind of a poor namey thing, yeah. except that that was the street name that Patrick, my buddy, lived on was Gunpowder Drive, and we thought that was cool. That's and his first cool. name of his dog was Darby, so we had to call it Darby Gunpowder. So we ended up flipping a coin at an Irish pub called Emmett's in Chicago, and if it was heads, it was Dar Darby Gunpowder, and tails, it was going to be the chai. And it was tails. I don't think Darby gunpowder has the staying power. Okay. For a community, you, you, what do you call them? Gunpowderers? Yeah, Darbies. Another question I always get asked, are there always half naked models around? Not always, but there are. Mm. That's what I say to be cool. Um, is that a real bar? You mean this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a copper bar. That's the real it's bar. It's a fully commercial certified bar. I shouldn't be back here. You, did you? Because yeah. I'm not certified. Are you not certified? Okay, it's okay. Is this okay? No, I don't care. But does the government? The local government might. Oh, okay. Come <laughs> after me. Who's the bad boy now? You're a bad boy. <laughs> Thank I you. I'm a bad boy. All right. <laughs> okay. We just a couple of bad boys at the bar. <laughs> Is Bill Murray your dad? <laughs> <laughs> we do look alike. <laughs> no, I wish he was my dad. Yeah. No, I got a good dad, yeah. but I would, wouldn't mind if Bill were my dad. Um, what's the story behind the slide? Oh, we wanted two signature pieces at the chive, and we didn't know what they were, but we, we wanted to have a bar. Mm -hmm. And then I think, honestly, one of the construction workers said, I could put a slide here. What? Why yeah. would he say that? I, that's the way I recall it, at least. <laughs> But what we did was we wanted, we were like, okay, we'll build a slide, but it has to be on the maximum legal grade. Yeah. Which is, I think, 43.2 degrees. Yeah. Um, if I could go back in time, if I could get a time machine and do one thing, uh -huh. I would go back to John jumping up and down going, maximum legal grade, <laughs> you know, and tell him, don't, don't, maybe 37 oh. degree angle, 35. Interesting. Yeah, because people toboggan down it and that's where you get in trouble. That's dangerous. Also, that's interesting. If you had a time machine, the only thing you would do is change the slide. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, does Playboy own the chive? No. No, they don't. Hell no. No. Right? They tried to buy it. They can't have it. I'd love to go to the mansion one day. Yeah, you will hear about me living there for quite a while for your long shots in the long shots podcast probably episode five that's a good podcast. it'll be called the, the episode will be called the playboy mansion do you think i how i mean how did you get invited and do you think i could get invited uh to the former no uh or to the former i forget what, to the latter i no. forget what i asked to the latter no okay, yeah. to the former uh yeah they they tried to buy us yeah so i i Kind of. Oh, so when they were trying, you, you said, well, yeah, they, they, of course, yeah, they try to woo you. Yeah. So okay. they have no reason to woo me. They sure don't. Yeah. Okay. Well, you could be nicer about it. Uh, oh, what's John like? People ask me that question. I don't know. I don't really have much self awareness. So. Oh, interesting. That I might know. tell a lot about Like you. a lot of people have that thing where they kind of know how they're perceived by other people. Yeah. I, had, I haven't a clue. Yeah. And I and by by the time I started caring that I should care, I stopped caring. If I had to describe you, I would use two words. Okay. Bad <laughs> and boy. boy. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, just me I though. See the th yeah. That's just me. Fuck Mary Kill. Humor hotness humanity. Oh god. <laughs> uh, I would fuck hotness. Good. I would marry humanity. Yeah. And I would it's the only humor answer. Humor is the only answer. It's yeah. the only answer. Okay. Fuck, Mary, kill, Chicago, Venice, Austin. I would mean, fuck up Venice. Oh, bad boy. I live in Austin. I would marry Austin. I would probably kill Chicago. Kill Chicago. I oh know. my god. I know. That's, that might be a mistake. You put me in a corner. I don't. I wouldn't really kill Chicago. Maybe was, I would fuck an Italian would, beef. Go, fuck, I'll tell you that. Fuck, Mary, date. Fuck, Mary, Mary. No, you have to kill. I just sorry. Second City. Damn. Can you explain? Okay, so when I was in college, yeah, the chive was just starting out. Yeah. And I would see women uh -huh. with KCCO written on their like butt. Everything. Yeah. Right? How did that happen? Nobody believed that the uh, chivettes that were submitting to our site 
were actual members of the site. Oh. So we would have them, be, we'd be like, look, no one actually believes you're an active member of the Chive. Could you just write it on your hand to prove to us and that you're a real this. Chiver? So it started with the hand. We mm -hmm. never said, you know, we didn't have the hubris to be like, look, can you have, find a friend to write it on the nape of your you know, yeah. left butt cheek or right. something. Because that's what I saw. That's how it all started was just like trying to prove to our audience, like, no, we have like 25% of our users are very attractive females and they, no one would have believed us if they don't. That never made sense to me. I was like, how did they do that? But I guess that's That's how we did it. Wow. That's how it started. Have you ever considered having some sort of Willy Wonka-like giveaway where you give away all of this? Man, that's deep. Yeah, thank you. Because uh, I could be the Charlie bucket. Like a golden ticket thing? Yeah. I mean, you could enter the golden ticket. Oh, great. It, That's all I want, one in one in whatever. Sure, th then if it's you, I okay. guess it is you. Okay. I wouldn't particularly want that for, not only for myself, but- For the community. For the community or anything. Or the business. Anything. Yeah, it would be a mistake. Uh, yeah, I'd love to do a golden ticket campaign. Okay. Yeah. That would be cool. Cool. I can't interview you without mentioning True Blood. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm. That is the definition of a smattering of applause. That was fucking awful. Like I pay you people. Can you do that again, please? John, I I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't bring up True Blood. Oh. A lot of fans. A lot of fans. That's. That was wow, worth it. I didn't, I didn't expect so many people would have remembered that. Who could have expected it? That um, is, that's kind of amazing. It's flattering. That's yeah. cool. It, yeah, after all this time. After all this time, yeah. Um, but I never watched the show, so I don't have any questions about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I've heard good things, but yeah. I, I never watched. Good. Um, you also founded Chive TV and Atmosphere. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> So I do want to say, it's known for viral clips at mm -hmm. bars, and I wanted to ask you about this clip, and I wanted you to tell me if you thought it would work okay. on Chive TV, okay? Say something. I'm the walrus. Who gave you that? I'm the walrus. Nanny gave you that. I said she, <laughs> Nanny was my favorite. Was. I think you said that off camera. That's good. That's... Uh, Mm. Oh, Taylor Swift, right? Anyone who's linked to Taylor Swift automatically mm -hmm. gets the Taylor Swift bump. Yeah. You are linked to Taylor Swift, right? In a weird way, yeah. Uh, let's, let's go there. We had rented a house on Cornelia Street a few years ago mm -hmm. uh, in the West Village, but we didn't know whose house it was. Yeah. There were, there were like hordes of teenagers outside our door all day. We went to this Italian restaurant across the street and he kept saying, you're at Taylor's house. And we're like, we what? we could be, sure. She had moved out th three or four days earlier. Oh. And we had moved right into our house. I have no idea that it was Taylor Swift's house. So we would find stuff that was hers. Like she left a red bra under the bed. No way. And Are would, you kidding me? Uh, amongst many other things she, she had just left. So we would DM her. Is this, this is yours? <laughs> wow. Yeah, we didn't know we were staying there, but what we did do is party our faces off once we found out. Good. Yeah, it went from zero to 100. Yeah. Because we were like, everyone wants to party at her house. So we were having huge parties there every night and like hundreds of people's, people would show up. So we have like Taylor Swift to thank for that. Man, I guess my invite was lost. Um, John, you have started a podcast. Well, you had a very successful podcast is more interview format. Yep. You said, let's come back. You said, let's call it long shots. Yeah. What else did hap happened in your brain? Well, I'd written the, everyone is always telling us we should tell the story of the chive because it's bananas. And so I wrote the biography front to back about six months ago and I looked at it and I thought, but only these 12 parts are good. Oh, <laughs> right? like everything else was just packing peanuts. Your editor, editor mind was like, was like these 12 parts here yeah. are the best. Yeah. 
we, we've released Fence Jumper. Yeah. What else do You're we You're going to hear about like how we met Bill Murray, how Keep Calm and Chive On came to be. Mm-hmm. You're going to hear stories about why we don't really like Mark Zuckerberg so much. Ooh. And But it's not all good. It's I think it's a lot of it's a, a, it's a story about inspiring people. Because we didn't want to just talk about us. That was the point. If it was just us talking about, look what we did, I didn't want to do it. But if it had an, a lesson, then like either a business lesson or a life lesson, then that was the story I wanted to tell. Mm -hmm. Because if it doesn't inspire other people, then I didn't really want to do it. So we kind of focused in on these 12 like little vignettes that are really compelling and well done. And I'm, I'm honestly super proud of it, but they're also the 12 best. Yeah. You know, like I I would say if it was an album, like they're all pretty, it'd be like a greatest hits. It's a greatest hits album. Should we end on that sweet note? Yeah, sure. That's kind of beautiful, John. Maybe you're not a bad boy. Maybe you're not such a bad boy either. To me, being the owner of this company in a Willy Wonka-like situation. That will never, (sighs) ever happen. Uh, Fuck you about that, Malort, too. Excuse me. Okay, back to work. (laughs)